welcome back achievers to your easy achievers gaming podcast for the week of july 10th i'm one of your hosts elijah sitting across from me virtually through the echo space is alex hello vietnam hello vietnam <laughs> vietnam well i've never actually watched that movie um, neither have i but i've seen like the clips of it of, of it i haven't watched like the full movie and i mean it looks good i feel like we've all seen that clip right like well it, that clip yeah it was in that really sad robin williams like montage when he passed away and then we all cried mm-hmm. at him. it's like yep oh, yep God. remember when he was cheating yeah, yeah. <sighs> but don't Stop worry this, this isn't a robin williams r.i.p podcast now this this is a video game podcast <clears throat> and an xbox podcast basically check us Pretty out much. every single friday at youtube or podcast mm-hmm. service of your choice you can meet us there every single friday and let us soothe your ear holes plus you can help us out you can watch the videos you can like them you can comment you can subscribe for more videos and then if you want to go the extra mile then you can, of course, go over to patreon.com slash You can give us a dollar that gives you an exclusive every single month that also gives you access to post and talk to us directly for any uh, questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas you might have for the podcast. And if you are a freeloader, don't worry. You can, of course, still help us. I mean, this is, as I said before, five stars everywhere. Comment everywhere you see. Give us all of the likes. If you want to scream at us for our opinions, don't worry, you can. Head over to Twitter at EVM9000, at Creepy Flip Skater. Alex, we got a pretty Xbox-centric news this week. Nothing. Mm-hmm. But before we get into the Xbox news, Alex, I would like to ask one simple question. What is it? What have you been playing? I beat... In thousand finally spiral one. Yes. Easy easy I, thousand and a fun thousand. Oh for sure. Yeah. Fun for thousand. sure. That's what's important. Um yeah, now I'm playing it. Surprisingly, my daughter loves the colors on spiral. Mm-hmm. I I'd be playing it. Dude, I'd be sitting there and she'd be sitting in her little thing and she turns like contortionist and just turns around and just starts watching the TV. I'm like <laughs> I'm like, no, it's bad for your eyes. Stop She's it. She's just staring at it like what she'd be across the room and be watching it too. And and she was like and my wife was like, she is literally just watching from across the room. I was like, I figured. Um, it's like mesmerizing to her, I'm sure. Oh yeah. But um I tried playing two. I like it, but not yet so far, not okay. as much as one. Okay. I think it's just because it's so different. And I'm just used to one. Okay. I'm. I'm. You have to do a lot of different things, and it's. I think I'm just so used to the levels in the other ones right. that I, I gotta get used to this one. But I'm debating if I want to keep playing this one or go straight to three because mm-hmm. I think I've played three a lot. Yeah, and, you're the dragon. Yeah, and I think I played that one a lot, and I think that's the one I always remember playing. Okay, I have not played <clears throat> two or three yet, so I can't <clears throat> speak on either of that. But I did enjoy my time with one. Um, I haven't been mm-hmm. playing too much this week. I played some Valorant. Um, mm-hmm. We played Overwatch, which is a strange yes, game to come back to after a year and a half, probably. Easily a year and a half. Um, like oh, for all, sure. the all new characters I haven't played as and then the different powers everyone has now. Super fun, yeah. still. Incredibly, I mean, incredibly I was behind... fun. I was behind three characters. I didn't even know the la- the last one I knew was Batiste. I didn't know they added Echo yeah, and then Echo. that Sigma person. Yeah, Sigma, the big old guy with the gravity. Mm-hmm. So he's he's cool, but um, I, I love how this game just kind of just keeps developing over the time. Oh, for sure. Really dude. quick, Alex. Overwatch 2. We haven't heard of this mm-hmm. in a while, and uh, it has nothing to do with the, uh, this week's news, but like, do you care about this? Overwatch um, 2? Rumors are yeah. that it, it's coming with a PvE... Uh, story mode and uh, uh, some new characters. Is this okay. exciting? To yeah, you? no, for sure. Yeah, I've always liked Overwatch. Okay. Um, I've never been into like with like tournament wise, but like it's fun to play. Um, I want to get more into it now that we started playing it again. I'm actually feeling it, man, because we had that good match that one day. Yes, yes. <sighs> yeah, so it's 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 coming back to me. I'm liking it as well. I am. I'm enjoying mm-hmm. my time. Overwatch two. I. Am looking forward to in like the smallest sense where it's like 
cool it sounds just like an upgrade and they're just looking for a reason to get like another 60 dollars out of people but mm-hmm. we'll see when it comes and another weird thing you can still play with people on overwatch one two in the, on mm, the that's cool. on two which is which is cool but weird yeah it's i wonder weird. if it's gonna be like a thing to where like it shows like you know there'll be like a subsection where it's say overwatch one or is it gonna be like cross play yeah, I'm assuming at some point they gotta like pretend crossplay is like not like exists and actually do it because they haven't mm-hmm. done crossplay really at all, and there's no mm-hmm. cross progression. Which I would at least have assumed cross progression would be a thing. I can at least get my same profile on the PS4 or PC, but no, no, of course not. No, <laughs> Blizzard is that's too easy for Blizzard. They have to they have to make it a little more complicated than that. Mm-hmm. Alex, enough about Blizzard and how much I dislike their choices. <laughs> we have a game showcase to get excited for. July yes. 23rd, Xbox uh, hit us up on Twitter telling us July 23rd, an Xbox game showcase showing off all of their first parties they have. Currently, they are ready to show. That is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time again on July 23rd. You can join them on 8 a.m. Pacific Time uh, with Jeff Keighley doing a pre show for his Summer Game Fest thing on YouTube Gaming. Um, but, Alex, hmm. very excited for this. Yes, yes, this, yes, yes. This this is incredibly exciting. I, I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us, what they're going to show off. Um, and speaking of what they're going to show off, we can get a little glimpse on what we're going to see. Halo Infinite reveal um, this month during July will focus on the campaign. We'll focus mm-hmm. on their campaign. So according to HaloWaypoints.com, we will be getting the first look at Halo Infinite's campaign during the July 23rd Xbox Showcase no mention of multiplayer so we can assume we will not see it unless alex they start off halo infinite the actual xbox game showcase they show halo infinite to start it off the campaign mm-hmm. and then they end it with multiplayer right um i would assume so i will i hope they do that thing or that they used to do to where like oh they all they do is like show gameplay and then they were like okay we're gonna get, or they, they, they talk about it they show some story stuff and then they go straight to just straight gameplay and you see it like you see the hud and stuff and then they'll show some multiplayer maybe like a brief second right yeah i i, I, I want to see at least a teaser or something um because they figured out multiplayer i mean it's not like they don't know what's the, what they're making so i i think we'll see it i'm still holding my i'm still holding hope that they are doing a br in some way mm-hmm. like any sort of battle that. royale yeah yeah uh so i'm hoping for anything of that sort uh any halo battle royale but alex i want some predictions alex, i want some predictions what are we seeing during the showcase right we're the xbox guys so mm. what's a prediction you got something yeah. solid do you have anything solid i is i feel like we'll see two things and they're very similar okay dying light dying light 2 interesting okay and dead island 2 Okay, this is very random, especially since it's a first party studios. <laughs> he doesn't own do, I, any of those games. <laughs> look, I feel like we'll. I feel like we'll see it. I don't know. I I, I don't think so because this is a first party showcase. But uh, I okay. mean, hey, they could be weird. Um, but did they I, say specifically? They it's, did. You know, first party because the third party thing was the last thing we watched. Mm. So mm. I'm sorry to dash your hopes, Alex, but this mm. is first party only. Um, but I am, I am hoping we see what uh, Coalition is working on, which I don't think we will. Um, mm. Or sorry, the initiative. I hope we see what the initiative is working on, <laughs> and hopefully we get like some Gears DLC. I know that's probably not going to happen, but I want to see more of that story, or at least like some sort of story for Gears. Um, maybe we get Gears Tactics porting to console because I really want that on console. Mm-hmm. Uh, just little stuff like that. I think we're getting a lot of new IP, so it's really hard to figure out what we're getting. Other than from the leaks, we know we're getting Perfect Dark Zero, most likely. Um, Alex, did you ever play that game, by the way? Perfect Dark? I I did, but I never like beat it. I just played like a couple of missions of it because all I I remember playing it on the I think the the one on I think it's on three sixty, and okay. I I I, tar- I um I think it was actually the demo for it so like you know how you used to get the game xbox magazines and it comes with like the demo disc or something yeah yeah it, excuse me it was on that disc and i started from that mm-hmm. and i remember that i was enjoying it but i never went back to it 
Yeah, the, the, apparently there's uh, rum, rumorings <laughs> that there's a remake in the works, so they're going to do a full remake mm-hmm. of Perfect Dark Zero. And then there's okay. the, of course, worst kept secret on Xbox is the Fable game that will eventually get. Uh, I assume mm-hmm. they'll show it here. Uh, I mean, because it's kind of too. an open secret, anyways. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I think they'll show it, at least a small teaser, and then, you know, they'll be like more later. But I think this is make or break. I think this is getting everyone excited for the new systems. And mm-hmm. I know this isn't, I know they're not talking about the systems here, Alex, but, but do you think we'll see a price? Hmm. I, I think we might now. Okay. Just because after PlayStation showed their system, they're like, well, they, we've shown our system for a while and now we need to say the price before PlayStation uh, does it first because okay. there's been those leaks about their prices. Yeah. I, I'm i of two minds. I want to say they go out first and say their price or even get crazier and try to finagle pre-orders to really incentivize uh-huh. people that's it, yeah. to run out there. I don't know if that's possible. I, mean, it's I know they're August. manufacturing... Well, I know they're manufacturing units, and they probably have a rough estimate on what they're going to be able to develop with the modifications with the coronavirus and all that. So I'm assuming yeah. they know what they're actually going to manufacture. So I, hopefully they'll be able to figure out pre-order numbers. So maybe they could get that out early. At, but I don't, I don't know. I know we're getting that August event that you know hasn't technically been announced by Xbox, but that's going to show Project Lockhart. So, mm, okay. so maybe Either that's when they'll thing. announce everything there. They'll do a Lockhart special event, and then they'll show off both systems, and then and mention all the prices, and then maybe go over yeah. July. Maybe that'll that be like the sense. system-centric one. So that's probably where everything will go. But it yeah. would be hype if they like did everything here. But yep. um, yeah, Alex, is there a game that you what's a, what's just a game that Xbox has finagle with that you would like to see come back? Hmm, I don't know. You you mentioned Fable, and I really they really hype me up for Fable. Yeah, yeah. I, I really just want Fable. To be honest, I just want... I'm just hoping Marvel went to Xbox to make a game. That's all mm-hmm. I want. I don't want a game to come back. I just want them to make a Marvel game. My hi, my my Gatorade get hype moment is, is an X-Man Xbox game, right? Mm-hmm. X, right? Are you kidding me with this branding, Alex, right now? xbox x-men yeah, yeah right am i the only one that sees this and see i wish they could do that Alex, but it picture seems like this picture really this. playstation look, though. look look into your mind's eye all right i'm gonna draw you this right this the okay. opening screen the <laughs> xbox comes out hits like the little thingy whatever the hell like the screen and then mm. the x moves slightly down and then it's like and then it's like a chest and then it's wolverine right Mm-hmm. Do you see it? You don't see it, dude. You? you don't see it. You're not with me on this, are you? Uh, you're breaking up. Oh, am I am I fixed now? There we go. You're fixed. There so we go. Repeat everything what you just said. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to repeat everything I just said. So imagine the X. X imagine symbol. the X, right? Mm-hmm. Then imagine that X like stay there for a second, for a little too mm-hmm. long, and you're like, oh no, the animation messed up or something. And okay. then and then the X moves like kind of forward and then it's like a belt buckle or like or like Wolverine's chest. And mm-hmm. it's a giant X. Okay. And then it's the X-Men. Mm. I feel like you're not on board with this. <laughs> I dude, feel like look, you're not on board look, with this. Look, my mind right now is like I fucking want that. Uh, you right? But I, I'm scared that they're not because Marvel's, you know, Marvel uh, Spider Man, Marvel is on is on PlayStation. Well, Marvel made with Ultimate Alliance PlayStation. on um what is it called? The Switch. <laughs> the Switch. They made it on the Switch. And the Xbox, I, I doubt they would just like left Xbox high and dry. <laughs> like an I old mean, X. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's mean. I mean, I don't know, man. I just, I, I really hope, I wish we could get like a good, like X, like Wolverine game, X-Men game. Look, man, you're bringing me down to the real world and I respect it. I, 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 it's probably never going to happen, but like just... Everyone that listened to that pitch was there with me for like you know two <laughs> seconds, and then they were brought two back into seconds. the real world. <laughs> I, I, I gotta be, I gotta be the person that becomes 
that per- the, you're the, the dad the real- you're the dad yeah. you sit yeah. him down and you explain drugs and you're like hey yeah. son drugs is Look, bad <laughs> it's not gonna happen <laughs> it's not gonna happen i'm sorry you can't fly and i'm like i can i can and i jump off the roof jesus <laughs> microsoft has reportedly expressed interest in acquiring wb games oh this is a crazy story that has been developing throughout the week so i'm gonna start at the beginning and then we'll uh we'll wrap it up near the end and we'll talk it out at t oh go ahead what no i was gonna say you said you said marvel x-men i say justice league exclusive to xbox oh god alex is thinking eight steps ahead of me at t has expressed interest getting rid of the wb games division after being in about eh, you know, some chump change of around 154 billion dollars in debt this debt <laughs> comes from of course the 2018 acquisition of time warner now known as Warner Media, which includes companies like Crunchyroll, DC Comics, HBO, HB, uh, WB Games, and a host of other subsidies. Two sources close to the matter told Information.com, which sounds super shady, <laughs> that Microsoft might be purchasing the set of devs responsible for many games such as Batman Arkham Games, uh, Mortal Kombat, the Lego Games, etc. AT&T is looking for a monumental price tag of $4 billion. <laughs> Good you know, one. easy, easy, easy money, right? Um, mm-hmm. There are reports take to EA and Activision are also in talks. Um, Four billion dollars is a lot of money, and that's a lot, that's scary to a lot of people. So very curious. It, Microsoft can of course just poop that out and never see it again, and mm-hmm. very very easily sell that. But to before we get into this, I'm going to name all the studios that you would get in this acquisition in this uh, Four billion dollar acquisition, right? So the dev studios go as follows. WB Games, WB Games San Francisco, WB Games San Diego, WB Games Boston, WB Games New York, WB Games Montreal, Monolith, Avalanche, Netherrealm Studios, Rocksteady, and TT Games. That would be every single studio you would acquire in this acquisition of WB Games division. You would, of course, not receive any IP from WB Games unless that is previously stated in the agreement of the purchase for instance if microsoft says they do buy all these studios most likely they can finagle an exclusive deal with batman for three years or something like that um that is a hypothetical scenario that could happen but um there's no guarantee that will happen with purchasing with the studios alex Mm. i want this to happen oh same as soon as this rumor went out first off this was before any talks of microsoft happened but mm. we heard that Take Two, EA, and Activision were looking into buying them, and I was like, "This mm. is like a perfect Microsoft thing. Like they buy this and they dip out, and they're like done with studios forever because this gives them way, way too many studios, and they'll be have plenty, lots of marquee ones too, right? You get Nether Realm, Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. like what Rocksteady? You get whatever they're working on. TT Games, mm-hmm. you have all Lego games ever. Um, Imagine Monolith- if all those were exclusive." Yeah, I mean, that would, if they own it, that would be exclusive. And on Game Pass, which, I mean, Jesus, like, makes Game yeah. Pass insane. Monolith, of course, made the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor games. WB Games is, of course, a wide myriad of things, listing from mm-hmm. any of the Harry Potter games to um, any random game. WB Games Montreal is now making that Batman game we know of. Um, and all the other things are random things like Injustice, some of the mobile games etc etc you can go on and on but this is a huge buy if they're able to actually um capitalize on this and be able to pull it off alex do you think this is the right decision for them of course we're not businessmen Um, so we have no idea we're just two guys that really like video games yep and yes i believe it is a good i feel like i think it is a good idea because you never know what they came up uh, could come up with i mean i mean imagine if before the arkham series if xbox had uh bought these studios and made those games exclusive yeah i mean giving getting the whole arkham trilogy if they can just redo that again like that alone is Mm -hmm. an incredible amount of money then of course the lego games then oh hey release a mortal kombat game and you get almost all of that back (laughs) like like it's insane (laughs) Um, like all that all put together, of course, when you add in all the other WB games doing other smaller things, you eventually get all that money back and, mm-hmm. and, and no problem at all. Um, and that is assuming that they don't do anything else crazy, like get a crazy, like Justice League game working or a Superman game or, 
you know, the the options are literally endless on what they could figure out. If only. If only. It will never happen because the world hates me. But yeah. if only. I wonder if they're ever going to make a new Shadow of game. Because we got Mordor and War. Are we I ever going to get it? War, so I don't know how that ended. It ends with a cliffhanger, which you would assume yeah. they would make a third game. But, I mean... Okay. I haven't heard. I, I'm, I haven't heard from Monolith in forever, so I don't. I don't even know if they're even making the third game, or if they're like in limbo with something else, or if they removed to, to pro, uh, products. I have zero idea what they're doing. Yeah. But I want to <laughs> see the acquisition. I think this would be awesome. This makes. I after if in theory they get this, this makes Game Pass literally no brainer for every person ever. Do you have? Oh, for sure. Every, I mean, you have so much on Game Pass. You have. You'll get every. It's like mind-boggling what you could work with this um so i hope it i hope it turns out uh it, they would actually be a force to reckon with in first party studios direction as well we have good studios yeah. now it's just we don't have anything compared to, to naughty dog or we don't have anything compared to like uh sony santa monica nothing even close to that on our side probably mm-hmm. the the closest thing would be maybe 343 which is you know that you know coalition's pretty up there too but Nothing close to like the narrative and storytelling and the known and the and the name factor that Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica carry. Mm-hmm. Alex, speaking of Xbox, still next gen game upgrades should be free. Xbox tell developers. Xbox have given publishers encouragements to offer free game free upgrades to their next gen games with the sale of their current gen counterparts. They have laid out options such as free upgrades with the sale of the game like Cyberpunk 2077 or something like NBA 2K21 is currently doing with their purchase of the $99 Mamba edition. You get a quote unquote free upgrade to a next gen version uh, when these systems come out. This is good. This is very consumer first, right? They didn't have to do this. And it's very cool that they're making sure that people who buy games now are at least going to have some assurance that they have games for the next one. Oh, for sure. Because I like, I mean, that's one thing that sucks is like, you know, buy a system day one and you don't have anything. You don't have anything. Yeah. That's, that's like the first thing you hear, like a mom or, or, you know, like a dad say, it's like, but you, but, but like, there's no games or, or I, Hey, I have all these other games for you. Like, why don't you just keep playing them? It's like, well, I can play them all in the new thing or. You know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. I feel like this is con- very consumer first and very much does another, what are you going to do, Sony? Um, yeah. Ball in their court. Like, what what you going to do? Are you going to do anything like this? Because it doesn't seem like it. It seems like they're doing very case-by-case basis of, you know, I, I heard they did Cyberpunk 2077 soon the free upgrade on PS4 as well, I believe. And mm-hmm. also uh, uh, Marvel Avengers is also doing that. Yeah. Uh, they're doing free upgrades. So they don't have a delivery system like smart delivery but they can probably finagle wording and yeah kind of do the most popular ones and probably still get away with it without getting called out mm-hmm. um but alex i mean this makes you excited correct no for sure i'm excited that um like let's say uh i you know i have just enough just for the system at least i'll have <laughs> be able to play my old games on there i mean and you know that you know that sounds sucky right like to someone else he's like oh i won't have games but i mean you'll be able to replay them with upgrades and that's something yes. right I know that sounds like, oh, all shucks, but I mean, these are expensive consoles, so most people won't have money to honestly buy the games with it, maybe one game, but to have the Mm. library come with them, that's awesome. I'm very curious, and I want want your opinion on this, Alex. How do you think they're handling Game Pass on the new Xbox? So, do you think Mm. everything currently in Game Pass will, like, fluidly transition if you still own Game? Like... It, like i know that like do you think that's how it's gonna work like if i own game pass right now and i want to play cross code that just came out on xbox today on game pass mm-hmm. can i can i play on my series x cross code hmm. that's a great right, yeah that, that's my yeah. thing it's like it's a it's an interesting question i assume yes but i don't know that's what I, I i assume it just i mean depending on whichever system you're playing on it would it would you know it would it would know yeah, 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 and they do have the smart delivery thing. So, I, I, mm. it, they did say the software knows what version to play. Yeah. So maybe when you start Game Pass, maybe mm. there's like a column for Series X games, mm-hmm. or maybe they do it to where like every game that's on Game Pass will be on Series X. I don't know. That'll be pretty wild. We're most likely looking at the best launching, the best like availability of games ever on a launch console which is very exciting 
Yeah, no. Um, like, I, I don't think we'll ever... Like, I don't think we've ever gotten anything like this, right? It's always kind of been a restart, whereas this is like a continuation, which is awesome. Yeah, I know. You have all your games available from all three, from three generations. And now, Alex, I almost forgot to bring this up. Um, we're, you know, we did a lot of Xbox talk. Let's do a PS5 talk. Did you see the PS5 cover art that they showed off? Yes. The what Spider-Man Miles Morales. What did you think, like, just off the top of your head? And just for everyone here, just go to Google, type in PS5 cover art revealed, go to the news page, just click on something. You'll be able to see it. It's a Miles Morales. It looks dope. Just look at it, and, and you'll be able to see what we're looking at. Now, Alex, what did you think? Um, I really like the way it looked. My thing is, are they using a fake border or is that what the borders for all games going to look like the black and white that's a that that was my question it, it said a peek at what the ps5 cover art is that's what they said mm. so i'm assuming that was the cases i'm assuming they're black yeah. with the with the with the white like and then the, the case is still blue oh was it blue i thought it was black yeah Did I miss no no this? the case is still blue but the the cover at the top instead of being all blue it's uh -huh. white with ps5 and black okay let me Oh no, you're right. How did I miss this? I could have swore I saw this black. It didn't. It, it looked well, it was dark. So you, uh, the shadowing, it does look like it's black. Yeah. No. Okay. So yeah, it is. It is the regular blue casing, and then mm -hmm. it has the white border on top, and then on the side that has that same white border. PS5, PS5, and then mm -hmm. Spider-Man Miles Morales looking sexy AF, looking mm -hmm. like a snack. No, hey, I'm, but, excited. Ugh, I'm so excited. But yeah, no, that that's cool. It's just a quick sneak peek. Just something random they threw out there. That got mm -hmm. a lot of traffic today, which is very exciting. I'm, it looks nice. Looks cool. Oh, for sure. Um, and uh, just just to throw out there too, someone did um the Miles Morales uh cover art, and they did it over the uh art from Into the Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. And it looks sick. It does I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll send it to you later. Moving on to a very cool story that I uh, that I want to actually encourage people to go read. So over on Kotaku.com, how an accountant earned a hundred and thirty-two thousand gamer score it's because in, sick. in a month. Yes, one one month. Just in case you don't know, you stumbled on this podcast looking for you know dog tips or something like that. Uh, a, th a thousand gamer score is one full game. So when you buy a game, you get a thousand gamer score. So in theory, she did one hundred and thirty-two games and thousand all of them. In theory, most likely that's not how it broke down. But uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna read some highlights. It's a very long article, so I'm not going to read it all. I encourage everyone to just go read the full article. So the it starts off as this, um, and there's some profanity, I believe, in the beginning of this. Just in case that bothers you. Uh, so the post reads as this quote: "What quarantine did to my gamer score in March? Sarah, who is 29, and asks for me to use a pseudonym." Earned 1,800 upvotes on the Reddit page r slash Xbox subreddit. People in the comments were shocked. Quote, I thought me getting 42,000 in a month was good. What the fuck is this? <laughs> End quote. Also, someone else wrote, eight years later, I'm still sitting at 20,000. How? It is without question one of the most bewildering feats in gaming history. Luckily, she has agreed to an interview over a Discord call. Um... And it just goes on to how much she loves achievements. Uh, she picked up Gears of War, was like her first big game. She spent like three months, got over 10,000 kills, which is incredible. Great. <laughs> I've never, I don't even think I've got 10,000 kills in any game ever. So I'm not that good. It's, it's, inc it's incredible. Um, but if you go to her true achievements profile, you'll begin to understand how she arrived there. The vast majority of her 132,000 points come from tiny, no-budget indie projects. The stuff sourced from the forlorn depths of the dashboard market. I mean, even the most well-read industry aficionados are unaware of games like Mushroom Quest, Red Bow, and Thunderpaw. But Sarah blazed through each of them with remarkable efficiency. Nobody was going to climb this mountain. Squeezing points from Resident Evil 2, Sarah worked smarter, not harder, Quote, I spent some free time at work compiling a spreadsheet of every game that can be completed really fast. It ended up being about 200 games. I hoarded them from fastest to small, uh, slowest and bought them as I went, she says. Uh, quote, Andy games are usually the shortest. There's a publisher called Radalika Games, which I know very well from listening to uh, uh, PS I Love You XOXO. Um, Greg play uh, the the host Greg Miller plays Radalika games for really fast platinums a lot, and mm -hmm. it's just like I think it's like thirty minutes something agreed just like that. 
and you get hmm. like a fast platinum. Um, they release a game weekly that can be completed in about an hour for a thousand points. I played about sixty of those. Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! They, they so they release a game every week, and you could get them in an hour. Whew! All right. Oh my god! Elijah, we got to work on that. Uh, you know, I, I, going into this, I was like, "Oh, that's cool. She did it." Reading that sentence, it it, it does something to me. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm -hmm. it, interesting. So I can in about less than an hour, a thousand. And there's roughly 60 of these games. Hmm. I'm doing some math and I'm liking the math. Mm. I'm sitting at a cool 256,000 right now, I believe. This pushes mm. me to 300,000, Alex. That is mm -hmm. very tempting. Very oh, tempting. Sure, I wanna, I'm, I'm, I've been wanting to hit 300,000 for a while now. Sarah decided to assign a loose rating to every game she played as a way to get a brief survey of the quality of the average microscopic indie. 70% of them, she says, scored a 5 or below. The facts are clear. It's not especially pleasurable experience to grind through a zillion $5 downloads. That gives you a scope of how much each game is, about 5 bucks. Um, scrolling mm -hmm. down a little bit more. Um, uh, there we go. In total, Sarah committed about 6 hours a day to her game of score run on weekdays and around 12 hours on weekends. She was occasionally behind for most of the tournament, but made up enough grind, uh, ground in the final five days to enshrine her place among the gods. In the last day of the event, she said she beat her own record for most gamer score achieved in a 24-hour period. 29,000. Oh, my God. In 24 hours? In 24 hours, she got 29,000 gamer score in a day. That is insane. <sighs> All right, I, I'm going we to gotta the, step I'm this a, up. I'm going to the website. We can't let Sarah blindside us like this. Quote, mm -hmm. I set a goal for myself. I was able to do it within three hours left in the event. She says, when I posted to the Reddit, people were like, that's more game of score than I've gotten in 12 years. <laughs> it was cool <laughs> to get all that praise. That might seem crazy, but it's pretty normal for me. End quote. Uh, <laughs> Sarah's partner during the... I, not, this is fun. I want to see what Sarah's partner wants to say. Sarah's partner during the tournament kicked in an additional 84000 during the month for a cumulative total of 219000 which resulted in a 70,000-point gap between their team and the second-place finisher. They destroyed them. <laughs> that alone is enough points to last a lifetime. But as a career step, Sarah isn't finished. Already, she's back to her usual PS4. She's still trying to get every trophy as she probably will be for her, for her the rest of her life. At the beginning of quarantine, we also figured out how this might be an opportunity to achieve some of the indoor uh, ambitions that have occupied her dreams. Maybe we're finally going to read The Power Broker or do a Spelunky eggplant run. I have no idea what any of that is. You could have told me that was future talk and I would have believed you. Oh, for sure. Uh, most of us quickly realize that it's easy to come to the paralysis for the moment. I've been willfully unproductive. So hats off to Sarah. Shakespeare might have written King Lear during the plague, but her big gamer score ought to go down for the be uh, next best lockdown accomplishment. What a fun article! That's just you know, that's just fun, and it highlights somebody who did a cool thing. Oh, hmm. Alex, Alex, hmm. how bewildered are you now? Right, right. Sarah's I'm over here on the web. I'm literally on the website right now, looking <laughs> at all of this. Sarah is over here smacking us, making us look like fools. To I'll be frank. We look like a bunch of casuals now, if I'm being honest. We look like... Duck Souls Plus. <laughs> did, did you say Duck Souls? Yep, that's what it says on here. Oh my god, is that, that's the that's the name of the game? Yeah, there's a game on here. Deep Space Rush. <laughs> Whoa, okay. You can't leave us without... I want you to uh, tell me what deep uh, Duck Souls is. Does it Duck have Souls, a, let me go back to it. Yeah, does it have a synopsis? Uh, Yes. Oh, okay. please read me Duck Souls. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. So, Duck Souls Plus is a fresh-paced action platformer about a little duck with an incredible skill oh to my... dash and a mission, find all the eggs to save its species. All right, short, sweet, and to the point, I guess. That was... Oh, whoa, and guess what it's on? I assume everything. It's on Vita. It's on... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I forgot. Radalika still supports Vita games. I, I completely forgot about that. That is aspect. amazing. Yeah, they still and guess what? They're uh they're two trophy lists. So you buy it on Vita and PS4 and you you get two trophy lists, which is insane. Elijah, we're gonna go on here and we're buying a bunch of these games. I'm down, man. I'm down. We can make it a stream. We can just <laughs> do dumb nonsense like garbage 
uh, achievement boosting look, for hours. I'm down. Look, by the end, hey, and they and they better they better not like think we're cheating and put and, and like then put like and wipe all of our achievements. Oh no, God, Alex, do you want to tell that story? <sighs> look, <laughs> it wasn't even me. Oh, it wasn't. Who was it? Who who was this mysterious third party who did it for you? My well, no, it's my little brother did it. Oh yeah, is that right? Mm hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How long ago was this? <sighs> <laughs> Moving on. A long time ago. <laughs> A galaxy far, far away. Yep. Mafia Definitive Edition will now be released worldwide on September 25th. Yes, it did get delayed. It originally was going to be August 28th. Um, financing everything in time for that launch date has become increasingly challenging due to the ongoing global COVID-19. You get where this is going. They delayed the game. So we are going to see it on September 25th instead of August 28th. We will get the Mafia 1. Still excited for it. Um, you know, all the normal stuff, take all the time you need, blah, blah, blah. Alex, does this make you sad? I mean, a little bit. <laughs> You're like, I'm, bro I'm broken up. I'm broken up. To be honest with you, because I'm like, I, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because I was trying to play three, uh -huh. and that upset me even more than this. Oh God, did we talk about this on on the show? Mm, I don't, I don't know. Think so. So somehow they broke a game with. I, I don't know what they did to this Mafia three game. But they've done something, and it was broken for a while. I don't know if they fixed it. They probably have. I've seen that uh, there's been patches and things. But it was terrible for a while. When they did a re-release, it looked terrible. I don't know what mm. happened. But some coding thing happened, and that game looked off. Alex, can you please explain to them what you saw? Mm. It was so bad, he told me to boot it up to look at it. Look, I literally felt like mafia 2 looked better and i still don't agree but i see where he's coming it looked bad it, and mm. it even ran pretty bad i was driving at like a high mile per hour and the game was like chugging i was like what is happening this game is newer than the other game what is happening right now that was pretty mm -hmm. inferior so hopefully they 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 tighten the belt a little bit over a hangar 13 and 2k and they they make this game run at least as good as the counterpart did. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's nuts. Like I'm like, ugh, why, why? I wanted, I was so excited to play three, and I go back to it, and it's just no, broken. No, basically broken. Essentially, it's, it's broken. <sighs> Sorry, we got worked up there. Moving on mm -hmm. to something a little more lightning. Infamous no name name renewal sparks PS5 revival hopes. There's literally not much there other than that there is a notice of a domain uh, domain name renewal uh, for the infamous game. So that kind of sparks hope into people's minds that maybe an infamous game, uh, at least the uh, uh, first two games, will make their way back on PS5 soon. Um, this happens regularly. You know, nothing could come from this, but something could come from it. I hope. Um, and I assume they would make Infamous 1 and 2 playable on PS5 just because it's an easy thing to sell and it's an easy launch game to sell, right? Like, you just remaster two games you already had and you weren't able to release on the PS4, just boom, it's on PS5. Mm -hmm. 40 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever you want to sell it for, you get Infamous 1, 2, and 3. Easy. Alex, do you think, it was, yeah, do you think sure. it's true? Um, I God, I hope so, man. I hope so I, as well. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm really wanting to play uh, Infamous. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I hope it's real. They need to. They they lost something with Infamous, and I I get Sucker Punch wanted to do something else. I would hate for mm -hmm. them to. I would hate to make a dev not want to to make the game. That's just gonna give me a bad game. But, mm -hmm. but I miss Infamous. I they I I, I would love a reboot, to be honest, mm -hmm. because I don't like where they ended two, and I don't like where Second Son brought us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Cole should be alive. Just something to say. What spoilers? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spoilers for I'm Infamous so Two, which is a twelve-year-old game. I haven't played it. <laughs> the Sims is getting a TV competition series very soon. This is over on Gamespot.com. Uh, this is by David Walensky. The Sims franchise is getting a TV show, sort of. Electronics Art has announced it will be partnering with Turner Sports Esports. Oh, that 
that has to be a there has to be a better name than that. <laughs> there has to be. There just has to be. That can't be their name. Turner Sports Esports. Sorry. Tur- oh, God. Sure That's that good. No, I just it's I don't it feels like a double negative. Turner Sports yeah. Esports. I feel like you can work a little better with that. Why can't it? Why isn't it just called Turner Esports? I mean, I, I need know. to email somebody. Moving on. <laughs> Gaming entertainment brand E League to broadcast a new competition series centered on the popular game series The Sims titled The Sims Sparked. The new show will debut on July 17th on TBS and continue to air on subsequent Fridays through August 7th. BuzzFeed's gaming vertical multiplayer will be broadcasting the show digitally on Mondays if the program is televised. According to a release, the contestants will compete in four episodes for a panel of celebrity judges to build the most creative and fully realized characters, world, and stories in The Sims 4. The grand prize is $100,000. The judges will include Maxis game developer Dave Mioltic, YouTube personality Kes- oh God. Kelsey Impicci, M- 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 and singer-songwriter mm-hmm. Taylor Parks. Quote, we are excited to introduce a highly... <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. 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 <laughs> we... All right. <laughs> Quote, Quote, we are excited to introduce the highly engaged Gen Z community of BuzzFeed Multiplayer to an inventive new form of storytelling within the imaginative world of The Sims. Brandon Smith, executive producer of BuzzFeed Multiplayer, said in a statement, Parting with EA and TBS allows us to offer new experiences for fans and expand our core values by spreading an inclusive message to gaming across platforms and screens, end quote. <laughs> Coinciding with the show, a series of in-game challenges in The Sims 4 called Sparked Challenge Program will also debut July 17th. The re says by playing, top com- uh, creators can win a chance to be considered for a future season of the show. Sorry, that highly engaged Gen Z thing destroyed me. I don't mm. even know what Gen Z is because I always forget. I think I'm Gen Z. It's just a funny ass sense were um you were 96 yes you're a millennial no no millennials are way before that right it's between a certain time because i'm a millennial are you a millennial yep i'm bad at these hold on i'm looking it up millennials boom Millennials, also known as gener- Generation Y, are the demographic cohort following Generation X, preceding Generation Z. Researchers in Poppy Mew use the early 1980s as the starting birth years and the mid-1990s to early 2000s as ending birth years, with 1981 to 1996 a widely accepted defining reign for this generation. Damn, I am an idiot. I apologize for judging you, Alex. You were mm-hmm. right on the money, too. That's the last year that they that they do it. And I'm a, I didn't mm-hmm. know. I thought I was a Gen Z guy. The, the reason I knew that answer is because I literally looked this up like a week or two ago. Uh, uh, okay. I have egg on my face. I will go wash it off. <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, oh, Alex, do you like The Sims? <laughs> do I like The Sims? <laughs> do you care about that at all? It's, it just That was just a fun thing I wanted to bring up. I, Look, I can say that I do. I hate. I, I don't like Sims at all. That, but right now I'm playing Sim City. Build it on my phone. <laughs> That Sim Sparts sounds like a giant advertisement. That's what that sounds mm-hmm. like. That's how, when I read that, I was like, this just sounds like an advertisement to Sims 4. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's, let's, let's rid our mind of Sims for a minute and go to the deep and dark and bloody Left 4 Dead world. Left 4 Dead 4 creators reveal concept art for new video game Back for Blood by Joe Scrubbles over on IGN. Thank Alex for adding this in the last second. Um, I did not see this, so thank you, Alex. Um, yes, Turtle Rock so Studios, the creator of Left 4 Dead, has shown off concept art for an upcoming co-op zombie game at Back 4 Blood. Um, we heard of it before. Yes, we did, yeah. And Back 4 Blood is not even kind of hiding what they're doing. <laughs> it is very blatantly <laughs> saying, we're Left 4 Dead. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Revealed on Twitter, the image shows a ramshackle human cell surrounded by fortifications traps. Um, it is in the article if you want to search it, just Back 4 Blood concept art and you'll see it. Um, it is the definition of concept art. It is not much at all. It doesn't tell you basically no, anything, sure. but it looks dope. It looks like, uh, oh, yeah. like if you showed me this, I was like, oh, is this like a Walking Dead thing? Because it looks very Walking Dead. No, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, we're getting an, we're getting next gen Left for Dead. I'm excited. <laughs> this is a fun sentence. When Back for Blood was revealed, Turtle Rock explained that the game will be a quote next gen. Uh, cooperative FPS, end quote, where, quote, you'll be able to shoot up a lot of zombies, like in Left 4 Dead. Oh, <laughs> but with a whole lot of that. new stuff in Back 4 Blood, which makes it unique. That was just a funny statement. He's like, you'll be able to shoot a lot of zombies. Like, that. okay, cool. That tells me so much yeah. about the game. 
Uh, the image could suggest a game in which defense is as important as escape and where players will be attempting, which isn't misspelled, to force mm-hmm. uh, zombie hordes into traps as well as into firefights. However, Turtle Rock has offered no new details about the game. So this is all speculation for now. Back for Blood is scheduled for release on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Although in 2019, a release on other platforms was said to not be out of the question. No release date has been set. Do you think we'll ever get a Left 4 Dead 3? No. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. We, I, ever is broad. Look, we will look, eventually. We, we got will. skate back. I mean, like I said, I think eventually we will probably see something akin to Left 4 Dead 3. Will mm-hmm. it be called that? I don't know. They're making Half Life 3 hundred percent right now. There's no way they're not. They wouldn't have made Half Life Alex without making Half Life 3. So, oh, sure. assumably they are working because they did say they want to get back into the games. So, assumably they're working mm-hmm. on these things now. I don't know to what degree and how strict they are, but we know they are working on that stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, do you think we'll see Left 4 Dead 3? That was a good question. Um, I would want to, and I think maybe in the and not in the near future, but someday we will. I mean, like I said, we just out of nowhere saw a skate happening. I mean, if people talk about it enough, I feel like we'll get it. We did will that to existence, to be fair. A lot of people willed that into existence, just us repeatedly asking for it, and them eventually going, if we give it to you, we shut up about it, and we go, yeah, and then they give it to us. Yep. Well, they, they give us the name. Not even the name. They just said, hey, we're working on it. We're Let working on Skate. Nothing. Not even a picture. It, it, not even it, the it, title. It, Nothing. Look, just, we're look, working on it. They got, we, we got it the same way, and we actually got more for Elder Scrolls Six. They showed us the title. That's and true. That was it. That's true. That's sad, but that is true. That is 100% true. That is not a lie in that statement, Alex just told <laughs> us. We got more out of the Elder Scrolls Six announcement than we did Skate, which is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, yep. and we're not seeing Elder Scrolls. We'll get Skate before Elder Scrolls. I, I I'll bet $100 on that. Mm. All right, Alex. That is the news for the week. You know, at every end of the show, we like to bring one question back to the table. Because I want to know, Alex, what do you have queued up for the weekend? Mm, maybe a show, Overwatch. maybe a video game. Ooh, Overwatch, of course. Of course. Yes. Um... I'm craving it. Yeah, I really want to play more Overwatch. Uh, maybe go about, uh, maybe, you know, Halo. We were playing Halo. We were playing we were Halo. Halo. That, was, that was so fun. We didn't bring that up at the show. I'm, I'm a little yeah. disappointed in this. Halo uh, Master Chief Collection is beautiful now. Oh, for sure. Me dude. and Alex, we were ride or die Halo Master Chief Collection. We were there in the bad times, all right? We know when it was bad. Oh. It is amazing now. It and, was and, bad before. And I have been and I have been playing it. So, like, every once in a while, I'll jump in for a match or two Same. and then jump out. But, like, I remember where the, the, the whole uh, main screen, like, uh-huh. was, so it was, like, the blocks and, like, each yeah. game was separated. Yeah. Like, now all that is like different which is funny because back then i didn't even care because i had halo games but like that looked terrible (laughs) like it was just squares and it wasn't it wasn't ingrained at all oh Um, yeah for sure uh halo 3 uh just to bring up real quick just in case you guys care halo 3 does come out on uh pc today uh part of the master chief collection if you guys are interested Mm -hmm. in that and they also announced that they're going to try and bring the campaigns onto uh the pc version as well because right now it's just the multiplayer games Mm. so you guys can look forward to that as well uh, but yeah i'm looking forward to more halo more overwatch i don't have really anything queued up i'm watching lord of the rings again as part mm. of um, a nice, series nice. that i'm watching with it but that's really cool mm-hmm. i'm excited for that uh, i'm excited for frodo to scream and not really do much uh <laughs> and just walk around sam. <laughs> and sam to save the day yep all right alex Thank you for joining me this week. You can, of course, if you want more of us, head over to YouTube, uh, youtube.com, search Easy Achievers in that search bar, and click on our channel page. You can subscribe there for more content. You can give us any comment um, on any of our videos. Uh, give us feedback. You can uh, tweet at us at EVM. That's an eight creative facilitator for any ideas, uh, question, comments, concerns, thoughts, I- or ideas can be directed to patreon.com slash easy achievers. For just a dollar, you have the right to give us any critiques or any uh, sort of questions. We'll answer them directly on the page. Um, look at these split super quick. And of course, a dollar will get you the exclusive every month. 
Thank you yes. guys for joining us. Alex, thank you for such a great episode. This is a really fun episode. Yeah, um, man. This, I'm, this I'm, is one I'm of the good ones. Here. This is one of the good ones. Usually they're shit, but this one's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and on that note, you guys have a great rest of your week. And go achieve. Go achieve.